What is going on everyone? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're talking about the 2013 EF5 tornado which uh, hit more Oklahoma. Now let's zoom into Oklahoma right here. More is just south of Oklahoma City and north of Norman. So yeah, more right here. So if we look at more from, you know, far away, we can kind of see it, especially if you look at 2014, you see this brown smudge. That's the tornado track. If we go back a year, it's still there, but you can't see it quite as well. But if you go back another year, it's gone. And interestingly, if you go back to 1999, you can clearly see this tornado right here. This is a completely different tornado. We'll talk about it in a future video. This is the Bridge Creek uh, EF5 tornado. But today, we are talking about the 2013 tornado. Uh, so more has been hit by a lot of tornadoes, 1999, uh, 2013 and 2004, I believe there's another another tornado. So, just a general rule of thumb: have a nice house that's very strong if you want to live more. The point of this video is to look at the path, look at the destruction, look at uh, some street view images, do some comparisons of before and after, and see what remains today. So, we're gonna hop in to the start of the tornado. Now, according to the National Weather Service. It started around here, but this was like your funnel cloud stage of the tornado. It was kind of, you know, starting to come down, going back up, going back down. It didn't do really anything until we get to about right here. Now, we have satellite imagery data of the day after the tornado. So this happened on May 20th, and this satellite data is from May 21st, 2013. By the way, I'm using Google Earth Pro. You can download it. Click this button right here and look at it yourself. Okay, so the tornado touched down and started doing real damage uh, at Long Drive and North Country Club Road. So around here. And if we zoom in, that's what we see. We can go over here and we can see some toppled trees that are knocked over. This fence is destroyed right through here. This uh, building obviously is uh, it's been damaged. There's some sheet metal throughout. But this was EF1, by the way. This was an EF1 level tornado, but it really didn't get strong until about right here. And this is when it went straight up to EF4 levels. So we have these houses right here. Obviously, these houses are completely knocked over. This area right here looks like they're building a new house because if we go back a year, this is a new development. There are no houses. And then we go and there are destroyed houses. So unfortunately, uh, these houses did not have a long lifespan. However, we got some people that have uh, showed up to uh, help out. And this one right here, looks like this one was completely fine, but this one was completely destroyed. We have some tarp on some of these roofs. I think they're trying to protect some of the stuff from the rain at this point. You can see the path going right through here. Got quite a bit of damage. This is EF4, EF3 level. Uh, as it started going down a little bit and you can really see the path right through here very clear dark green and then just cuts right through here now at this point it went back down to like an ef3 level from an ef4 uh, you can tell because these houses aren't completely destroyed but the roofs are gone and you can see inside the interior we look at this one right here and you can clearly see a, almost like a chair in the corner there this thing right here has been completely knocked over this trailer right here this looks like a camper maybe um, so obviously some Significant damage. We have an American flag because people were feeling a little hopeful that they're going to recover. And if you look at this house, uh, you can see that the tornado must have passed on the right side because this is completely destroyed. And this is still, I mean, it's, it's definitely destroyed, but not nearly as bad. So it's still heading to the northeast. And at this point, uh, the National Weather Service declares a tornado emergency. Uh, for more in Oklahoma City. Before it was just a tornado warning, but they said, yo, this is a tornado emergency, which pretty much means, like, seriously, get to the basement or else you're gonna not make it. So they declared that, and it was an EF3 level at this point, and it went down through here, and you can kind of tell, so you can see this, see how it gets a little bit lighter right here? That's the path that it took. We have some uh, darker trees over here to the west, and then you can see the trees slowly thin out as they get closer to closer to the tornado and this right here is a Canadian river and the tornado crossed down right here and then started heading east actually and it was EF3 at this level and it uh, crossed about where Interstate 44 and the Canadian River meet. Now we have this decommissioned bridge right here and after the tornado 
there was some structural damage and they had to tear down the bridge. But, but they did leave this little area as a reminder of what was once there. This is 2018 satellite data. So anyway, at this point, it maintained its EF3 intensity and started heading over to the east. And if we zoom out a little bit, you can kind of, just to get like a big picture, you can kind of see it go right through here and then start coming up right over here. So at this point, the tornado uh, got significantly wider and turned into an EF4 level tornado, especially near South May Avenue, which we can see right here. Now, a lot of these houses, in fact, one of these houses was completely torn from its foundation. If we zoom in here, you can see quite a bit of damage. If we do a before, Nice looking neighborhood, and then an after, and it's completely destroyed. And, oh, this, this is actually in October, so this is quite a bit afterwards. But uh, these are completely destroyed, as you can see. Some are worse than others. Now, at the top of this road, this South May Avenue, we have this uh, huge estate right here. Now, if we look at it before, uh, pretty nice home. We have a tennis court and some shed and a pool house and a pool. I mean, this is a nice home and we had a nice fence and then uh, it was destroyed right here as you can see and then in October this is the foundation and you can see that the pool's got some rainwater or something in it. If we go forward you can see that as of 2018 nothing has changed about this property at all. In fact all these other houses have, well that's a new house, but all these other houses have rebuilt except for this. But uh, if you go back before you can see that we have We've got houses right here. Go back one more. Two houses right here. Then it looks like we have a house right here and then completely destroyed in the tornado. Right here. Completely destroyed in the tornado. And then over the years, this house, this house, and this house in 2018 never rebuilt, unfortunately. So if we drop in here, have a look at it. There it is today. But let's go back to October. I mean, this is a nice estate. This is straight up like a pretty wealthy person. They have a nice gate and everything. Then in April 2012, still looking really good. Have a little, little pedestal right there, pretty cool. And then right after the tornado, just absolutely nothing. And they just left it. I don't know if they just sold the land off. And then today, of course, it's still completely gone. The other side of the street in 2015, you know, some of these trees have no leaves, and these I, I bet these are remains from the tornado. But if you go back to 2007, I mean, you've got two houses right here. And then if you go a little bit forward, look at this. <laughs> look at this guy waving straight up. These are nice houses, and they're friendly people. And then, fortunately, it's just gone. And this driveway, uh, it, something about it just kind of so eerie. So at this point, the tornado continued to uh, head east, and then went in between uh, EF3 and EF4 levels at this point. You can see the track clearly through here. Uh, but it kept going this way. And if we look at this road right here, uh, we have yet another house never rebuilt that I noticed. So it's crazy that some of these things just remain and they just leave them there for so many years. But uh, back to 2013, kept heading east, strengthened up to an EF4 level. But if we look right here, this was, uh, there was a collection of oil drums right here. If we look before, you can see these four right here. And after the tornado, uh, one of them was never found and one of them was found over a mile away. So somewhere, I'm sure we can find an oil drum, but that might take a while to find. But if you're interested, you can go look yourself, but right through here, so that was destroyed. So the tornado kept heading east, and then it crossed over this right here, Southwestern Avenue, and it uh, hit the Orr Family Farm and the Celestial Acres Horse Training court which is right here and unfortunately over a uh, hundred horses died during the tornado but if we look at before you see all these buildings right through here and then 
they're just all completely gone. And the surveyor said at this point, it was likely that the tornado had reached its EF5 level of intensity. So now at this point, we start reaching the suburbs of Oklahoma City and more. And all these houses down here were damaged, as you can see. But right here, we have Briarwood Elementary School. And we also have some sort of, uh, I think this was some sort of like retirement home or something. But if we look before, uh, you can see that there's a nice house right here. And, and this is the uh, design of the elementary school right here. And then the tornado hits and it's completely gone. And then and over the years, they just destroyed this one and completely build, completely rebuild a new elementary school. And we can start looking at these other houses and we still see empty plots in 2015. Uh, and of course, all the trees are gone as well. But this kind of gives you an idea of uh, the rebuilding process. But right here, we see this driveway. And then in 2018, they just never rebuild this. And we have this ghostly reminder of what was, what was once there. Now, fortunately, uh, no one actually passed away at Briarwood Elementary School. So the tornado continued east to some heavily populated areas. And then it ended up hitting another elementary school, and this is Plaza Elementary School. Here's a before look of the elementary school. Then here is an after. Oh, here's an after of the elementary school that was hit. And unfortunately, this is actually where most of the fatalities uh, in the disaster occurred. So this area, the Plaza Towers neighborhood area is where most of the uh, fatalities occurred unfortunately, but uh, people did rebuild over time, and uh, now if we look at it today, it looks like uh, only a few plots, empty plots still remain, so most people have rebuilt, and the school is completely different now. Uh, this right here, they never rebuilt, it looks like, so this would have been looking like, uh, before it would have looked like this, and then the tornado hits, of course, right here, and then looks like they just never rebuilt in that area. And if you look at this stretch right through here, it looks like uh, none of these, a lot of these houses didn't rebuild at all. And if we hop into the old street view of that same area, we just see these empty plots as ghostly reminders of the 2013 Moore, Oklahoma tornado. 2012, driving down, beautiful neighborhood, 2014, all that remains is the concrete. Now at this point, uh, the tornado headed to the north instead of directly to the east. It started heading up north right through here, and it completely took all the grass out of these fields over to some more uh suburban neighborhoods and I believe that these four homes right here were made completely out of brick and were actually really well built and since they had been blown off of their foundations when they were surveyed it was surveyed as EF5 level intensity. This right here was the hospital which uh, got hit by EF4 level intensity and directly south there's this which is the Warren Theaters which had some exterior damage but fortunately was not in the path of the tornado as it just barely dodged it. And then right here, that this was a bowling alley. If you look, you can actually see the bowling alley lanes. If we go back, that's the bowling alley. And this, they never rebuilt. This is just an empty parking lot uh, to this day. So that's still there as a reminder of the tornado. Right here was a 7-Eleven. And unfortunately, three people uh, perished in this uh, gas station as well. But at this point, it crossed over Interstate 35, and it actually weakened to a EF3 level for just a second as it crossed over. There's a few vehicles that were mangled right through here, but at this point, it crossed over right through here. You can, here's the bowling alley right there for a reference, but uh, it went back to an EF4 level strength, and then uh, it got quite a bit uh, more narrow at this point, but was still very, very strong. and it crossed over this field right through here and went through some more suburban neighborhoods. Now this right here, this is Hunter's Glen uh, Court right through here. And I believe this house was a really well-built brick house. 
and they could they couldn't find hardly any of the remains of this house because it was just swept away. And I believe this vehicle right here was actually uh, a vehicle that was somewhere on this court, but this was EF5 level damage. And it continued to the east and went through um, some more neighborhoods right through here. And obviously it's quite a bit more narrow compared to what it was before. And if we do a little before, then we do an after. Oh, this was actually during the rebuilding phase. But quite a bit of damage. This right here was a high school. And fortunately, it actually missed the high school, so that's good. But there's a gymnasium that was part of the high school right here that was completely damaged. And they didn't rebuild the high school. You can see some of the lines caused by the tornado's wind. Continued here. Was quite a bit more narrow but still very strong EF4, EF5 levels. Continued crossing through the suburbs of Moore. And it began to weaken a little bit uh, back to EF3 levels. And your EF5 damage doesn't quite look like this, but it actually looks a lot like this, where it's just a completely empty slab. There's not even debris on top. It's just completely clear. That's what EF5 damage it looks like. So the tornado continue heading east and as you can see uh, we're getting into some less populated areas and we're getting into some nicer homes as well right through here significantly more narrow at this point uh, went through some industrial areas over through here you can kind of see the dirt path of what it's taking continue heading east and then if we look right through here you can see these trees and you can tell it went right through here because these uh they thin out right through there, crossed over. Continue heading to the east. It was out in the country, and you can look and see this dirt path. If you kind of faintly, you kind of have to squint your eyes a little bit. But it went right through here, and it looks like it might have hit something over here. But it continued, went through this strip of trees right through here, and then around this road right here it started to dissipate and right past this building right here this was one of the last houses or buildings to be hit but the tornado dissipated uh, completely we're underneath a cloud right now and then it went up about right through here thus ending the terror of the 2013 Moore Oklahoma tornado and this was around uh, around 3 30 p.m. so all in all, it was 17 miles long. If you look, it started about right here, and it went all the way to that shadowed area right through here. And some debris was found as far away as uh, in Midwest City. So they found personal belongings and debris in Midwest City while the tornado went right through here. That's pretty significant. But there you have it. That's the 2013 EF5 Moore Oklahoma Tornado. We got more tornado videos coming in the future, so please subscribe if you want to see more videos. And thanks for watching.